Parkinson's disease is a progressive neurological disorder that primarily affects movement. It's become a global health crisis, with cases doubling in the last 25 years. Today, we're going to explore some of the most dangerous environmental toxins that may be playing a role. The quest to understand the causes of Parkinson's disease has led researchers to investigate the role of environmental toxins. Studies have shown a strong correlation between exposure to certain environmental toxins and an increased risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Exposure to environmental toxins can occur through various routes, including inhalation, ingestion, and skin contact. The Human Genome Project, completed in 2003, was a monumental scientific achievement, mapping out the entire human genetic code. However, while genetics has provided valuable insights into some diseases, it has only revealed a small piece of the Parkinson's puzzle. This discrepancy between the relatively low heritability of Parkinson's and its increasing prevalence points towards a significant role of environmental factors. The current understanding of Parkinson's disease suggests a complex interplay between genetic predisposition and environmental triggers. Genetic predisposition might set up the dominoes in a particular way, but it's the environmental trigger that pushes the first domino. This model helps explain why not everyone exposed to environmental toxins develops Parkinson's. The field of epigenetics adds another layer of complexity to the understanding of Parkinson's disease. Epigenetics refers to changes in gene expression that occur without alterations to the underlying DNA sequence. These changes, often influenced by environmental factors, can switch genes on or off, affecting how our bodies function. Air pollution, a ubiquitous consequence of industrialization and urbanization, has long been recognized as a major health hazard. The link between air pollution and Parkinson's disease is a relatively recent area of investigation, but the findings so far are compelling. Fine particulate matter known as PM2.5 which refers to particulate matter with a diameter of 2.5 micrometers or less, is of particular concern. The geographical distribution of Parkinson's disease provides further support for the link between air pollution and this neurodegenerative disorder. Studies have consistently shown that areas with high levels of industrial activity and consequently higher levels of air pollution tend to have higher rates of Parkinson's disease. This pattern suggests that industrial emissions might be contributing to the rising burden of this neurological disorder. While industrial emissions are a major contributor to air pollution, it's important to recognize that this environmental hazard is not confined to heavily industrialized regions. Even in developed countries with stringent air quality standards, air pollution remains a significant public health concern. Vehicle emissions are a major source of air pollution in urban environments. Wildfires, a growing threat in many parts of the world due to climate change and other factors, are another significant source of air pollution. These intense blazes release massive amounts of smoke, particulate matter, and other pollutants into the atmosphere. The health impacts of wildfire smoke are well documented, affecting respiratory and cardiovascular health. Our modern agricultural practices heavily rely on pesticides and herbicides to protect crops from pests and weeds. However, this reliance on chemical solutions comes at a cost, as many of these substances have been linked to an increased risk of developing Parkinson's disease. The link between pesticide exposure and Parkinson's disease is not a new discovery. While numerous pesticides have been implicated in Parkinson's disease, some stand out as particularly potent neurotoxins. Rotenone, a broad-spectrum insecticide, has been shown to induce Parkinson's-like symptoms in laboratory animals. Paraquat, another widely used herbicide, has also been strongly linked to Parkinson's disease. Migrant farm workers, the backbone of the agricultural industry in many countries, face a disproportionately high risk of developing pesticide-induced Parkinson's disease. 
These workers often handle and apply pesticides without adequate protective gear. Protecting the health of migrant farm workers requires a multi-pronged approach, including stricter regulations on pesticide use and improved enforcement of safety standards. Section 4. Beyond the Farm. Pesticides in our homes and gardens. While agricultural use accounts for the majority of pesticide exposure, it's important to remember that these chemicals are not confined to farms and fields. We encounter pesticides in our homes, gardens, schools, parks, and even in treated clothing, exposing us to low but chronic doses of these potentially harmful substances. Many common household products such as insect repellents, flea and tick treatments for pets, lawn care products, and even some cleaning supplies contain pesticides. While these products are generally considered safe when used according to instructions, even low-level exposure over extended periods can contribute to our overall pesticide body burden. Children are particularly vulnerable to the effects of pesticide exposure. Their developing nervous systems are more susceptible to the toxic effects of these chemicals, and their behaviors, such as crawling on floors or putting objects in their mouths, increase their risk of exposure. Reducing our exposure to pesticides in our homes and gardens requires a conscious effort to choose safer alternatives, such as natural pest control methods, using pesticides sparingly and only when absolutely necessary, following product instructions carefully and properly storing and disposing of pesticide containers. Heavy metals, a group of naturally occurring elements with a high atomic weight, are ubiquitous in our environment. While some heavy metals like iron and zinc are essential for human health in trace amounts, others such as lead, mercury, and manganese are highly toxic, particularly to the developing nervous system. Exposure to heavy metals can occur through various routes, including contaminated food and water, industrial emissions, and even everyday products like cosmetics and toys. Once these heavy metals enter the body, they can accumulate in organs like the brain, interfering with essential biological processes and potentially contributing to neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's. Manganese, a heavy metal used in various industrial processes, has been particularly implicated in Parkinson's disease. Chronic exposure to manganese, often seen in welders, miners, and steelworkers, can lead to a condition known as manganism, characterized by Parkinsonian-like symptoms such as tremors, rigidity, and difficulty with movement. While the mechanisms by which manganese contributes to Parkinson's are not fully understood, research suggests that this heavy metal can damage dopamine-producing neurons in the brain, disrupt mitochondrial function, and trigger oxidative stress, all of which are implicated in the development of this neurodegenerative disorder. Solvents, a class of chemicals used to dissolve other substances, are ubiquitous in industrial processes, consumer products, and even some medical procedures. While solvents serve numerous beneficial purposes, many of them pose significant health risks, particularly to the nervous system. Exposure to solvents can occur through inhalation, skin contact, or ingestion, depending on the specific solvent and its application. Once in the body, solvents can travel to the brain, where they can interfere with neurotransmission, damage nerve cells, and potentially contribute to the development of neurodegenerative diseases like Parkinson's. Trichloroethylene, or TCE, a solvent widely used in industrial degreasing, dry cleaning, and paint stripping, has been identified as a potential risk factor for Parkinson's disease. Studies have shown that long-term exposure to TCE is associated with an increased risk of developing this neurological disorder particularly among workers in industries where TCE exposure is common. Other solvents such as perchloroethylene or percy, toluene and xylene have also raised concerns about their potential neurotoxicity and possible links to Parkinson's disease. While further research is needed to establish definitive causal relationships, the existing evidence warrants caution and efforts to minimize exposure to these potentially harmful chemicals. Persistent organic pollutants, or POPs, are synthetic chemicals resistant to environmental degradation, persisting for decades and accumulating in the food chain. These pollutants, including PCBs, dioxins, and some pesticides, pose significant risks to human health. Exposure occurs through contaminated food, particularly fatty fish and dairy products, and inhalation of contaminated air or dust. POPs accumulate in fatty tissues, including the brain, 
disrupting hormone signaling and neurodevelopment. PCBs, once used in industrial applications, are linked to Parkinson's disease. Although banned, PCBs persist and pose health risks. Studies show PCB exposure increases Parkinson's risk. High PCB concentrations found in affected brains. Mechanisms involve oxidative stress and disrupted dopamine signaling. Section 4. Occupational Hazards, The Price of Progress Certain occupations, particularly those involving exposure to heavy metals, solvents, and pesticides, carry an elevated risk of developing Parkinson's disease. Protecting workers requires strict safety regulations, personal protective equipment, and education about risks. Early detection and regular medical checkups are crucial for high-risk occupations. Section 1. The delicate dance of nature and nurture. The quest to unravel Parkinson's disease reveals a complex interplay between genes and environment. This dance shapes our susceptibility to this neurological disorder. Genetics lay the groundwork, but environmental factors often act as triggers, leading to the loss of dopamine-producing brain cells, the hallmark of Parkinson's disease. Imagine a seed planted in fertile soil. The seed carries genetic potential but needs the right conditions to flourish. Similarly, our genes might predispose us to diseases but environmental exposures determine if these predispositions become illnesses. In Parkinson's this interaction is striking. Studies identify genes linked to the disease but genes alone can't explain its prevalence. Environmental factors play a crucial role, interacting with genes to modulate risk and progression. Understanding this interplay is crucial for prevention and treatment. Identifying environmental triggers can help develop targeted interventions, potentially mitigating risk and delaying disease onset. We might even prevent Parkinson's altogether. Section 2. Unlocking the Genetic Code, A Quest for Answers. The Human Genome Project, completed in 2003, provided a blueprint of our genetic makeup. This achievement ignited hopes for unraveling the genetic underpinnings of diseases like Parkinson's. Researchers have identified genes like SNCA, LRARC2, and PARC2 linked to familial Parkinson's. However, most cases are sporadic, involving multiple genes and environmental factors. Genome-wide studies have identified genetic variations associated with sporadic Parkinson's. Understanding these genes helps develop targeted therapies, offering hope for effective treatments. Section 3. Towards a Personalized Approach. Tailoring Prevention and Treatment. Parkinson's disease arises from genetic and environmental factors, leading to a personalized approach in prevention and treatment. Genetic testing and environmental risk assessments help tailor interventions to individual risk profiles. Early interventions include lifestyle changes, dietary adjustments, and increased monitoring. Personalized treatments consider genetic makeup, environmental exposures, and disease stage. Section 1. The Urgent Need for Action Environmental toxins are significant risk factors for Parkinson's disease. The rise in cases points to a crucial role of these factors. We live in a world awash with chemicals, many untested for long-term health effects, particularly on the brain. The urgency to address this issue cannot be overstated. The time for action is now. We need robust research to understand how these toxins damage the brain and develop strategies to mitigate their impact. Section 2. Empowering Ourselves, Protecting Our Future While the task of mitigating environmental risks might seem daunting, it's crucial to remember that we are not powerless in this fight. Knowledge is power, and understanding the risks we face is the first step towards making informed choices that can protect our health and the health of future generations. We can start by educating ourselves about the potential neurotoxic substances lurking in our everyday lives. Reading product labels carefully, choosing safer alternatives whenever possible, and minimizing our exposure to pesticides, solvents, and other household chemicals are small but significant steps we can all take to reduce our personal risk. Advocating for stricter regulations on chemical use, supporting sustainable agricultural practices, and promoting policies that prioritize environmental protection are crucial steps towards creating a healthier world for all. Our collective voices when raised in unison can drive change and hold industries accountable for the products they produce. 
and the environmental impact of their practices. Empowering future generations with the knowledge and tools to make healthy choices is equally paramount. Educating children about environmental health risks, promoting sustainable lifestyles, and fostering a sense of environmental stewardship will pave the way for a healthier and more sustainable future. Section 3. A Hopeful Horizon Despite environmental toxins, there is hope. Advances in research and sustainable practices offer optimism. Researchers are identifying genetic risk factors and developing early diagnostic tools. Sustainable practices reduce exposure to harmful chemicals. The journey requires collective effort and commitment. With continued research and advocacy, a healthier future is within reach.